Hi, I'm Al Bain from Al Bain for Leather, and I'm here to talk to you about the Cobra Class 4 sewing machine from the Leather Machine Company in Southern California. The Cobra Class 4 sewing machine features a compound feed walking foot system, a adjustable swing out edge guide, a dual operated presser foot lifting system, one system by hand, and the other with the smaller of the two foot pedals. A built-in bobbin winder, adjustable stitch length with a stay put reverse lever, high intensity LED lamp, heavy duty thread stand, driven by a high efficiency servo motor, a speed reducer built on a 3 8 inch adjustable height table, all solid steel, two foot pedals, the large one for the motor control, the smaller for the presser foot lift mechanism, supported by four locking casters. Loading the thread tree, place your cone of thread over the post, guide the thread off the top of the cone, from the back to the front toward you. Take the thread, the tip of the thread, go through the first thread guide. Make sure that your thread snaps in between the two tension discs and then back out through the second thread guide. Okay. Follow the head of the machine to your operator's left and there's another thread guide here. Go from the top to the bottom. Making sure your thread travels in a nice clean path. Take the tip of the thread and pass it through the small hole in the bobbin and hold about three inches out. The other side of the bobbin has another small identical hole. Slide it over the shaft and engage the bobbin and the pin together. Press down on the locking lever, take out all the extra slack, and then drive the machine. Trim off that extra tail and now you're ready to wind bobbins. This lever popping up indicates that the bobbin is now full. Now grip it with your hand very carefully. Put your thread under your thread holder, reach over with your trimmer, and cut it off. So now let's thread the needle side of the sewing machine. First what we're going to do is we're going to go through this wire thread guide by snapping it in place. Now we're going to go through the tension discs. Key feature here, you have to snap it and hear it snap into place inside the tension discs. Okay come back around and through that original thread guide one more time. Snapping the thread into place. Okay. Come down and through the second thread guide below okay. and around the, the roller tension discs. Come around two times and once you've gone past the top Go back out through that thread guide again. Okay. After the thread guide, go through the take up spring, then up to the take up lever, there's another little thread guide right here, come down to it pull it out with your finger and push the thread through. Underneath in this location you're going to find another spring wound wire thread guide. I'll stick it in there from the side. Now that's in there. And on the side of the needle bar you're going to find another little, little hole right here. Come from the top to the bottom. Okay, and then in to the needle okay, 
and through the center foot and out the back. For the purpose of loading the bobbin into the machine, what we want to do is we want to cycle the machine so the needle is just barely penetrating the feed dog. Removing the safety plate by turning it counterclockwise and pulling it straight out. That exposes the bobbin and hook assembly. By putting the needle in this position, it exposes the bobbin to the bottom. Use your finger and push on the little lever in the back. It pops out the bobbin holder. Take out the bobbin and to put in it, put in a new bobbin, what you want to do is ensure that it's paying out the thread in a counterclockwise direction. Put it back in the hole. You can see that it's going counterclockwise. Push it all the way in and slide that thread up through that groove underneath the spring and between the two little teeth. Using your finger for friction helps a lot. Pop it into place now the bobbin's in the machine. Hold your needle thread and cycle the machine one full revolution. This brings the needle thread and the bobbin thread up through the machine. Bring the bobbin thread out. Thread the presser foot out behind and to the left, to the right. And replace the protective cover. Put it on and then turn it clockwise and you're done. Replacing the needle. So to do that, we want to loosen this particular set screw. We only have to undo it about a quarter turn. Don't have to remove it from the machine. Take the needle straight out and straight down. Get a fresh needle. Make sure that the thread groove, the long groove on the side, is at the operator's left. Push it up into the holder and make sure that it tops out. Ensure that the eye of the needle is going from the operator's left to the operator's right and then tighten down the set screw. Rethread your needle like normal from left to right and make sure that you get the thread through the inner presser foot out and back toward one o'clock. When you prepare to sew, you want to have the needle thread going through the inner foot, the bobbin thread coming out of the feed dog and both threads going out and behind toward one o'clock. You want to hold them down and make sure that you're not pulling, but also a firm grip. Put the textiles in and use the release mechanism with your foot or with your hand to lower the presser feet. Using the edge guide, you can guide a nice straight line. Notice that the inner foot and the outer foot work in tandem with the needle. So the needle is pistoning and penduluming, walking forward with the inner foot, the outer foot raises. The outer foot comes down, the inner foot and needle cycle to reacquire the stitch. Stitching a straight line without a guide. We're going to load our textiles and if we want about a quarter inch from the edge, we're going to use the landmark on the edge of the foot. See where my thumb is touching the foot? Lower our presser foot and line that right up. Okay, so we use that little piece of hardware and we follow right along that presser foot along the edge. Okay, if you wanted to do a little bit further away, you could use your finger and build a fence so that your finger is acting like the stitch guide. Either way, it takes a little practice, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so this is stitching on a curve. What we want to do, we want to load our textiles in the normal fashion, and as we approach our curve, we want to realize that we want to make the move into the turn with the presser foot, the inner presser foot in the down position. And so as we approach, as the presser foot comes to the bottom and the outer foot is in the up position, we can make our pivots.
pivot, 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 pivot. As the presser, the inner presser foot is down and the outer presser foot up. This segment is stitching a right angle. When we stitch a right angle, it's critical to make sure that the needle goes past the bottom dead center so that the needle is now rising about a quarter of, of an inch beyond the bottom dead center. So here we go. We put the needle all the way in and about a quarter inch above the bottom dead center. Use our lift system to raise the foot. Turn our textiles at that point. Put the foot back down and then continue sewing. Using this procedure in by guaranteeing the needle up past bottom dead center one quarter inch, it will not skip the stitch. There you go. Changing the presser feet. To change the presser feet from one type to another, you would need to loosen the set screw on the outer foot, which would be on the left, and on the inner foot, which is on the operator's right. So simple loosen and remove of the screw on the outer foot. Takes the foot away. The inner foot, the screws on the operator's right side. Loosen that one and push it straight down. Replacing it is in exactly the opposite order. Put the inner foot back on, making sure it's all lined up parallel. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to put the right foot in place. These don't have to be extremely tight, just about a quarter turn past snug. There are many combinations, a right foot, left foot, and a double prong foot blanket set, and a smooth feed dog and a toothed feed dog. The combination is up to you. Switching out the feed dog. And to do that, we need to work our way all the way into the back of the hook mechanism. First thing we're going to do is remove the throat plate. Two screws on the top gets access to the throat. Take them out, lift the throat plate out of the way. 
remove the protective cover by turning it counterclockwise and it exposes the hook. Two screws on the hook retention ring. These screws make note that they have a spring behind them and you don't want the spring falling off and bouncing on the floor. Notice the spring on the screw. Try not to lose it. You have to hold everything together at this point. If not, all the parts will fall out. So hold the bobbin in place, take the retention screw off, and notice how the bobbin case and the bobbin holder are sitting on top of the follower, and take it out as well. Now inside, at the 12 o'clock position, you'll see a flathead screw. Loosen that one, removing it all the way. And out comes the feed dog. This one has serrations for sewing heavier textiles, and we're replacing it with the smooth face for when you're sewing finer leathers. Slide it in place into the little fitting there, put your screw back in, and tighten it down. Don't make this very tight yet because you need to adjust the top dead center. I'll put it in, put the throat plate back. There we go. Tighten the screws up just slightly past snug. What we want to see here is about a sixteenth of an inch at the top of the stroke. So cycle the machine so that the presser foot is in the up position and about a sixteenth of an inch. So since we didn't tighten it, we can move it around just barely above the throat plate. And now reach inside and finish tightening that screw. Note again, not too tight, just a little bit past snug. At this point, you're going to take advantage and clean the race all the way around. Get all the lint and dust out of there. Okay. Clean your hook of any lint and dust. Replace the hook by making sure that you can see the thread tension device. Set it on top of the follower and then put the ring over it. Careful not to let it all fall out and bounce on the ground. Hold it all in place. Make sure that you don't drop your springs off of your screws. Just a little bit past snug. And 
If your bobbin thread is already in the holder, cycle the machine, bring the thread up. And replace the dust cap. Installing the edge guide. We need to remove the flat work platform. Removing two screws. Take the platform away and put the edge guide in the same holder. Remember not to over tighten the screws. Lubricating inside the front of the machine. You're going to remove one screw, two screws, and pull the face plate clean completely off the machine. Setting it to the side, you're going to find six oil points. Little drill holes that are going through the casting. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This one's on a cam, so it'll move around. You want to line it up so you can get to it. Not too much, because the oil's going to drip out and get on your workpiece. When putting the cover plate back on, you want to engage this little hook onto this pin to make sure that it the thread releases when you raise the presser foot. Okay. That pin and that fork lined up, tighten the screws, and you're finished. On the lower right hand corner of the machine, you're going to find this cover plate. Inside this co cover plate, you're going to find five oil points, just like this one here. Rotate the hand wheel around until you can expose the other ones and put a small drop of oil. Make sure not to over lubricate because it'll spill off and get all over the work table. Lubricating oil points on the back of the machine. There's going to be a cover plate right here and three oil points that are going through the fittings. Two on the reverse linkage and one on the drive follower. This segment is for oiling the hook. You put a small drop of oil on the, the race right here, behind the feed dog, one on the race right in front of the feed dog, and then one small drop of oil through this little hole in the throat plate. Most of the oil points on the Cobra Class 4 are indicated in red. A small drop of oil in each of these points will keep your machine running smooth. Look for red point, small drop of oil every day. What we're going to do now is the bobbin winder friction disc adjustment. So the bobbin winder is mounted on the face of the machine with four screws. Remove all four screws. When taking out the last one, make sure that the bobbin winder doesn't fall off the machine because it will pull away and fall off. 
Inside the bobbin winder, there's a, a round wheel, and that's what drives the whole system. But it gets power off of this, off this shaft and this particular friction disc. So as the wheel wears out, it makes less contact with the friction disc, and then you need to move the friction disc toward the operator's right. To do that, you loosen two Allen screws, one at the top and one at the bottom, using a three millimeter Allen wrench, and then push the wheel, or the friction disc, over to your right about a sixteenth of an inch at a time. It's easy if when you start out with a machine you make a little mark with a paint pencil or something so that you can use it as a position reference in the future. To put it back together, it's all exactly the same way but backwards. Put the winder back in place, and then reinstall the four screws. Maintaining the appropriate tension on the drive belt, you should be able to squeeze it together somewhere about a half to three quarters of an inch. If it's any looser than that, you need to adjust the belt tension on the speed reducer, which is located underneath the saw machine. To do that, we loosen this particular nut and push the drive wheel down and then tighten it back up. Very simple. Don't over tighten half inch to three quarters of an inch of, of compression on the belt. Adjusting the servo motor's speed. First thing you're going to do is notice that there's a display and it's spinning a little circle around and around. That indicates that the, pro, the motor is already programmed at a particular speed. When you want to adjust it, the first thing you're going to do is push the down arrow and hold it for three seconds. The display changes from spinning to 5.0. Push the, oops, it took too long. Okay, hold down the arrow for three seconds, 5.0. Push the up arrow until it says 5.3. Push the down arrow, and then the bigger the number, the faster the motor will drive. The lower the number, the slower the top speed will be. Let it sit for about five seconds until it starts to wind again. Now, at this point, the motor speed is set. This is the presser foot slide adjustment. Okay, to adjust it, to raise the presser foot higher, you're going to use your 14 millimeter wrench, loosen the nut, and then slide down the banana slide lower. Lower on the banana slide raises the presser foot higher. Higher in the banana slide lowers the foot. So it will climb higher or lower depending on where you position it on the banana slide. When you receive your machine, it'll probably be somewhere in the middle because that tends to work for most people. Set it to where you like it and then finish it with a slight turn of your wrench and you're done. Adjusting the hook needle timing. To do that, we need to remove the cover plate, cycle the machine until the needle is 3 16 of an inch above bottom dead center. At that point, the point of the hook and the needle will be in extremely close proximity. If they're not, then by opening this cover plate and looking inside, you'll see a large Allen head screw. Loosen that screw counterclockwise, and then you'll be able to physically turn the hook and bobbin assembly until it lines up with the needle. Then go back and tighten your Allen head screw and test so. If you have any problems, feel free to contact the Leather Machine Company. When removing the work platform, you're going to use a 14 millimeter wrench and loosen the four nuts. One, two, three, and four. Removing the nuts, preventing the washer from falling on the ground. It's off. Now you're going to lift it up and tip it out of the way and slide it out of the way.
exposing the cylinder arm. So installing the work platform, what we want to do is take these four washers and set them over the holes that are pre-drilled in the work table. Okay. I'm going to take this, slide it up and over the throat plate and line up those four long screws so that they go through the washers and gently set it into the table. And down it goes. Okay. Take the big washers provided, set them over the screw, and tighten it up. You'll do that three more times. Take your 14 millimeter wrench, tighten it up, and you're done. This lever raises and lowers the presser foot. When you push it all the way to the up position, it will lock in place, holding the presser feet up off the feed dog. Lowering the presser foot with the pedal, by using the right side pedal, or the smaller pedal, it will pull down on that chain and disengage the locking mechanism. By using the right pedal with your foot, it will disengage the locking mechanism and allow you to lower the presser feet. The inverse is true. By pressing on the presser on the pedal, it'll raise the presser feet, facilitating the locking up position by hand. This is the stitch length adjustment lever. By turning this knob counterclockwise and pushing the lever further down, it makes the stitches longer. Inversely, by turning it in clockwise, it will no longer travel as far down, making the stitch length shorter. By setting this adjustment, it will also limit the distance it will go in reverse. Forward and reverse. These numbers are only indicative of relative position. They do not indicate stitch length. This segment is troubleshooting thread tension problem loops on top. The first thing you would want to look at is that you had properly fed the thread underneath the spring when you were loading the last bobbin. So the thread has to come under the spring and through that little groove right there. If it's found that that's in proper position, what you're going to do is loosen the friction discs and the roller guide one eighth of a turn each. Re-sew, testing, and if that didn't fix the problem, do it one more time, one eighth of a turn each. And if that doesn't fix it, please feel free to contact the Leather Machine Company. Diagnosing thread tension problems. Loops on the bottom. To repair the loops on the bottom, what you're going to do is tighten the friction tension and the roller tension one quarter turn. That's clockwise, one quarter turn each. Re sew. See how it worked out. If that didn't work, do it one more time. Re sew. And if that doesn't solve your problem, feel free to contact the Leather Machine Company. Troubleshooting tip cannot remove the workpiece from the machine. Typically, you would sew along, come to the end of your stitch, and either you didn't raise the needle out of the goods, so raising the presser foot doesn't allow you to put the workpiece out, so you would want to raise the needle all the way up to the very top and pass the bottom or top dead center by one quarter turn. That, in turn, disengages the needle thread from the hook, allowing you to pull the workpiece out by using a little finger tension on the upper thread and pulling the workpiece out of the machine. Troubleshooting tip, cannot remove the workpiece from the machine, would happen if you started sewing and forgot to hold the thread prior to stitching. 
what ends up happening is the needle and the bobbin thread get birds nested around the bobbin. So I recommend holding the thread down against the machine and to the right at about one o'clock for at least three stitches prior to letting go of the thread. Diagnosing why the machine won't feed the textiles. Either you may have inadvertently forgot to lower the presser feet. There could be a kink in the chain not allowing the presser feet to come all the way down. Or you may have inadvertently left the stitch length adjuster near the zero position so the solution would be to push it all the way into the sewing position, either in the forward 